welcome to Slash Forward. In this episode, we're going to wrap our lips around some long pig with the 1999 film Ravenous. Let's get to it. We open on a military ceremony where Captain Boyd is receiving commendations for bravery. Since celebrations are perfectly capped off with a fine meal, they all tuck into their plates of bloody, bony meat. And the mouth sounds abound. <laughs> Boyd understandably excuses himself to puke, where he learns he's being shipped off to a fort in California. In short order, he arrives at the rustic but cozy encampment. He reports to Colonel Hart, who welcomes him with an offer to dip his playful, slender fingers into the rough folds of his nutsack. He fills him in on the camp culture. They're a way station for westbound travelers, with very little winter traffic and a skeleton crew. The next morning, in the majesty of a fresh mountain snowfall, Boyd tells a contextual tale. He was discovered napping on the battlefield and found himself at the bottom of a corpse pyramid, where the blood and strength of his commanding officers poured down the back of his throat. This gave him the audacity to capture the enemy command. He was rewarded for appearances only, and subsequently banished to the remote fort as a quiet punishment for his cowardice. That evening, Boyd is startled by a face in the glass, and they run out to find a frostbitten traveler. They work quickly to revive him, leaving him by the fire as Toffler reads him Goodnight Moon on repeat. The next day, he wakes up and reveals he's been in the woods for three months with little food. His convoy was stranded in a cave by a winter storm, and after eating everything they could find, he returned to camp one day to find the other had begun eating the first person to die. He acknowledges that it was shameful, but that meat was tender as hell. Things devolved predictably from there, and he stole away in the night, leaving Mrs. McCready at the mercy of the ravenous Colonel Ives. Excited by the prospect of an adventure, they endeavor to march to the cave to save Mrs. McCready and bring Colonel Ives to justice. George tries to warn them off by explaining the Wendigo myth, wherein eating human flesh gives the diner strength and an insatiable hunger for more. It proves to be a long and arduous journey. Along the way, Toffler gets so excited about finding a bone that he breaks all of his. That night, he's awoken by Kohun, gently licking his wound. I mean, what? Was he not supposed to do that? He expresses extreme regret over this and offers to be bound for their reassurance. They eventually arrive at the cave and venture in. The cave party finds remnants of a camp in a deep, dark hole. Reich sploops his way down while Kohun starts acting disturbed outside. Reich finds Mrs. McCready's head and then counts off the corpses to find a full encampment of bodies. Recognizing what this implies, they try to warn the others. But Kohun has already dug up his weapon cache and started preparing his dinner. Boyd and Reich emerge and pursue the survivors, attempting to locate them by Toffler's screams. They eventually find out what he was screaming about, but don't catch up with Kohun before he gets the drop on them. With little hope to overcome the power of the Wendigo, Boyd cliff dives to escape, smartly planning to break his fall with every branch of this tree, and then a long graceful tumble down a steep hill, meeting Reich along the way. He finds himself in a hovel, suffering from a simple, open, compound spiral fracture of the shin. With a nagging taste for blood and little other chance for survival, he does what he needs to do. And it's a smart choice, because a couple of tenderloins later and he's bearing weight again. He eventually makes it back to camp, where General Slauson arrives with a rescue party. They find the cave, but no evidence of anything nefarious. They eventually restock the fort with fresh entrees, to be temporarily under the command of Colonel Ives. Hey, I know you- uh, oh. Boyd tries to warn Slauson, but Knox, the only other officer previously present, was blackout drunk during Cohoon's visit. Boyd insists he shot Ives in the shoulder, but he finds that the rejuvenating power of eating men extends even to one's complexion, and Ives takes pleasure in playing it slow, like, you got Wendigo, bitch! So now Ives is free to have some fun by gaslighting the hell out of Boyd. He acts as normal as possible while Boyd stares at him every waking moment, disturbing everyone. Ives confides that he found Boyd's little smokehouse in the woods, and knows he put his mouth on Private Reich. He also reveals that cannibalism not only kept him alive, but also cured him of all of his normal maladies, like tuberculosis, depression, and even inverted his prolapsed anus. Now he's strong as an ox and virile as a bull moose. Why, he's rock hard right now. He then plays seductress, reminding Boyd of the call of the hunger. As a result of this attack, they try to round up Cleves to arrest Boyd. They eventually find the horses slaughtered and get a sneaking suspicion as to the location of Cleves. Yup, he's on the roof. And then Martha is sent to fetch General Slauson on foot. Boyd attempts to keep an eye on things, even while shackled. Knox is dispatched by a mysterious assailant who we soon learn to be Hart, brought back from the brink of death by the healing powers of human flesh, and now vigorously committed to the keto methodology. We find that their plan is to build a little coven of cannibals, feeding on wayward gold rushers in the spring. Since Boyd's basically there already, other than the moral objections, they want to bring him on. So Ives gives him an all-or-nothing choice, and Boyd eventually makes the only reasonable decision. As they prepare for the arrival of Slauson, Boyd engages Hart in a philosophical discussion, convincing Hart to free him in order to kill Ives. But then Boyd totally pranks him. He and Ives eventually meet up, drawing blood and engaging in an epic headbutting contest. Boyd brings the fight to conclusion by sacrificing himself to the jaws of this giant rusty trap. Always competitive, they have a die last competition while Slauson takes a little taste of the stew, and Martha decides to run off, fed up with caretaking a bunch of dumbass colonial lunatics. 
And that was Ravens, an excellent and often overlooked gem in the Western cannibalism folklore horror subgenre. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.